By now, you should feel comfortable with geologic time, the law of superposition, and comparative anatomy. In our last lesson, we learned about Charles Darwin, who was one of the first scientists to compare the body structures of different species and think about their common ancestors. Today we'll learn more about a diagram that Charles Darwin created to show how species are related and share common ancestors. Let's look at an example together. This is a species called the stick insect. It has a trait called displaying bilateral symmetry, which means that its left side is the same as its right side. The next species is the goldfish. It's a vertebrate, which means it has a backbone just like us, and it also has bilateral symmetry. Here's another species, the dog. It's an amniote, which has to do with its DNA, a vertebrate, and it also displays bilateral symmetry. Our last species is the scarlet kingsnake. It is also an amniote, a vertebrate, and displays bilateral symmetry. Now that we've learned about some of the traits of these four species, we can begin to construct our phylogenetic tree. Bilateral symmetry is the only trait that the stick insect shares with these other three species, so I'm going to place it alone. Next, I'm looking at the goldfish. The goldfish has bilateral symmetry, and it's a vertebrate, just like the dog and the scarlet kingsnake. As I drag up the goldfish, I want to make sure it connects to the stick insect because they both share bilateral symmetry. Next, I've got the dog and the kingsnake. They share these three traits with each other, so I need to make sure that they're connected on the phylogenetic tree. I'm going to drag my dog up here, and I want him to be connected to the goldfish because they're both vertebrates. Because the kingsnake shares all three traits with the dog, I'm going to put the kingsnake right next to the dog. All four of these organisms have bilateral symmetry, so I'm going to put that here so it goes up to all four of them. That tells me they all had a common ancestor. Next, vertebrate. I know that the stick insect is not a vertebrate, so I don't want this to go here. I want it to go here so it travels up to the goldfish, dog, and kingsnake. Finally, amnio. I know that this has to go here because the stick insect and the goldfish are not amniotes, but the dog and the kingsnake are. I've successfully completed my phylogenetic tree, which shows that all four species share a common ancestor. The ones that share the most branches are most closely related. Today, you're going to start with a four minute ed puzzle about evolution and the tree of life. Next, make a prediction. Is fungus more closely related to an animal or a plant? Make your prediction here. Next, watch this two minute ed puzzle to learn how to play the tree of life game. Then, test your knowledge of the vocabulary. Click here to go to the game and follow the directions. When you open the lab, click on training trees and then click on red, green, and gecko. As you're playing, make sure to click on the magnifying glass to learn about the species. Remember, the most important information is right here. When you're done, you'll share a picture of the phylogenetic tree you created. Then, use what you learned to make a claim and support it with evidence about whether fungus is more related to an animal or a plant. You have two new words to add to your vocabulary journal, and don't forget to reflect.